Good afternoon, guys. It's working. Bringing you a quick update on Bitcoin. Hope you guys are having a wonderful afternoon. Uh, we're looking at Bitcoin to the U.S. dollar four-hour chart on Coinbase. And last time we spoke, guys, Bitcoin was, I believe it was just operating. Actually, let me double check so I don't lie to you here. Okay, so yeah, last we spoke, Bitcoin was operating right around here, guys, a couple days ago, right around that $10,400 zone. This is the area that I told you guys last time to uh, to watch out for that resistance. And of course, we did find some resistance there, not once, not twice, but actually three separate attempts it took for Bitcoin to break up above. Um, once Bitcoin did break above this zone, of course, I told you the next major zone was going to be 10650 and that's exactly where Bitcoin is finding some resistance as we speak. And to be fair, guys, if I'm, if I'm being 100% honest, we have actually now, if I zoom all the way in here, we have actually broken above that $10,650 zone. And technically, we broke above it, and it's now just literally sitting on top of it, on top of it acting as support. Um, so, you know, the question is, are we going to continue back to the upside here? Because, yes, technically, this would give you a nice entry and it would, that would target our next area of resistance, which would be about $11,050. Um, so, in all fairness, guys, yes, I, I've got a little bit of skin in the game right now, not very much, and not as much as I would normally, and I don't have quite as much confidence in this move, well, uh, for a couple reasons. Number one, and this I should have caught last time and I didn't, and that is completely my bad. If I go, if I if I just look at this overall microstructure and we just go from the last uh, uh, swing high from this break down here, so this would be the last swing high here. So let's grab our fib and just jump swing high, swing low on that little wick there. Where do we see we're finding resistance? Literally right at the 618 fib, right at that golden ratio. Um, wicking a little bit inside the golden pocket, but for the most part, right there at that 618 fib level. Um, and I missed that last time, guys. I, I, I really did. So in... So the fact that we're sitting there rejecting right there, of course, you know, it, it makes me want to believe that we may, in fact, come back down and test. We, we put in a very, very nice area right in here. What was um, acting as support turned into resistance, and then we broke up above that area of resistance. And again, that's right at that $10,400 area that I discussed last time. You know, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see Bitcoin come back and, and test 10400 and then possibly take another shot at breaking up above decisively above 10,650. Um, but just because you know, I I, I want to go ahead and 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 stick by the rules that I have, which is if we get a decisive break above 10,650, I will be looking for a move up to 1150. So when we did get a decisive break, I have ha I have entered a small position, but it's a very very small position, guys, because again, this is this this, this overall structure is a little bit bearish to me now. There's a couple ways that you can look at this structure, guys. I know, um, I know, and I know, and, and this isn't going to be news to anybody. And most people are talking about this. We have a very, very nice um, kind of a, if we if we anchor ourselves right at this wick right here, um, and then go all the way up. We have a very, very nice ascending support line uh, that Bitcoin has been uh, respecting uh, so far. And coincidentally, or not so coincidentally, if price did come back down here, we would. It, and if it did find support at ten thousand four hundred, that would just coincidentally, again, or not so coincidentally, be right there at that ascending support line. So there's no question we have that ascending support line here. I think. Um, you know, the real question is, how am I going to draw that up to the upside here? Are we looking at kind of a rising wedge pattern, which if we are, again, that would suggest continuation to break down to about 10,400-ish, somewhere thereabouts. And you could look at this, and of course, that would be a bearish pattern. So if we did come back down here, find support, coming back up here, I would eventually expect this thing to break down and probably break down pretty hard. I mean, uh, we'd be looking at somewhere around 9,400 as a potential target if that is in fact the case. Um, or excuse me guys, or I can completely cut the wicks off of this. And again, this is, other analysts are talking about this guys. This is not my, I don't want to take credit for this. This is a, you know, even though this is, it's, I mean, it's fairly, it's a fairly obvious pattern. Um, I don't want to act like I'm some brilliant genius that's figuring this out. This is going around the internet um, quite a bit now, but you could also look at this as a rising wedge. Um, and of course that rising wedge would suggest continuation to the upside here. Uh, to horse to at least 11,050 and depending on where it is when it hits pot potentially a little bit higher here and either way This is overall a bearish pattern now the target on this would be somewhere again back down to if you know If we did continue to the upside here depending on where this thing actually did end up falling You know, we'd be looking somewhere around 10,000 10,300 ish somewhere in that neighborhood um, so Either way, guys, this this does look like a a, a potential 
overall bearish pattern, even though we might have some uh, some continuation to the upside in the short to medium term. In the very short term, maybe coming back down to 10,400. And that's a big maybe, guys. This 10,600 could actually hold. And again, I've actually entered into a small position here just because we did have a decisive break. And I want to stay, you know, I, I, I want to make sure, in, and I do have a tight stop loss as well, but I want to make sure that, uh, you know, I'm not going to miss any move. But and if, and if it does go south, then of course, that's why you have stop losses, right? Um, but there's no question that overall, midterm, even if we do come higher, this does look like it may want to break back down. Now, when will that get invalidated? That'll get invalidated, in my opinion. That'll get invalidated. I told you last time that if we broke above ten, uh, uh, broke above 12,000, I was no longer looking at 12,400. Let me come back out here to the dailies to kind of look at this overall macro pattern, um, or yeah, I don't know if you want to call it, but this overall pattern that we've been in, you know, since Bitcoin topped out here on January, or excuse me, on uh, June the 26th, this massive consolidation pattern we've been in. I told you, uh, the first I was looking at is 12,400. I told you on my last video that 12,000, a break, a decisive break. And then now we're talking about on a daily for a decisive break. So a daily open and close above 12,000 would, in my opinion, indicate continuation in a breakout of the consolidation pattern to the upside. I'm going to, I'm, I, I may lower that even more. I'm now going to be looking at more 11,500. Um, I do think that even if we, if we come to, if we get a decisive break above 11,500, I do think that probability complete and by decisive, again, I mean a daily open and close. We're not looking at a four hour. We're looking at the overall consolidation pattern. So if we get a daily open and close above 11,500, I do think that probability will heavily shift in favor of the bulls to breaking out of this overall consolidation pattern to the upside, to which point we'd be looking at at least 13,000, very, very likely coming up and trying to test this uh, prior high right around 14,000, really 8, 13,850. Um, and if it does come back and test it, I do think there's a good chance that we break out of it. But right now, even with this break to the upside here, what I don't like about it is, and I just refreshed this, we're only looking at about 15 billion on daily volume. And yesterday, much, much lower. We've actually ticked up a little bit, but yesterday, our yesterday much lower it was uh, about 13,000 day before that a little over 13 or excuse me 13 billion day before that a little over 13 billion so volume is is relatively weak if I if I just compare it to the last few months volume is very very relatively weak and anytime I'm seeing a breakup on weak volume that just tells me that we've got a lot of uncertainty in the market and that just tells me that traders are just again not confident in our the, the bulls and the bears both have had egg on their face over this consolidation pattern and they're just waiting for confirmation of a break to the up or to the downside. Now, looking at our indicators, again, this is on the daily. We are coming up on a major area of potential resistance on the daily RSI, which, as I told you, every single video is going to be about 52.9, 53-ish, somewhere thereabouts, guys. If Bitcoin can get up above on the daily RSI, above about 53, I do start to get a lot more confidence in this in this, uh, in this this little uptrend, this uh, little micro uptrend that we've been in here recently. Um, but as of right now, it does look like we potentially are coming up on, on an area of resistance on that daily RSI. Now, looking at at the weekly, that same exact area, it right around again, 53, right around 53, 52.9 ish, somewhere in there, um, would be an area of support. And we do have a lot of room to drop and still maintain the overall macro uptrend here. Again, remember I told you on the weekly, it's not until we break below this zone, which again is at about 52.9 on the weekly RSI, that I start to I start to question the the overall uptrend and start to believe that we may in fact be coming back down. Um, to to test much much lower lows and again we'll have to wait and see but we do we're, we're nowhere near there yet certainly nowhere near there yet these are just the things i'm kind of reiterating just so you guys know the major pivot points that i'm watching as of right now the overall macro trend is not in jeopardy in my opinion doesn't mean that we can't, it can't come down lower. It just means as of right now, I'm not seeing the evidence of it. We are still just consolidating. I can still categorize this as healthy consolidation. Um, however, as I pointed out before, and this is looking at the weekly on Bitstamp, 11,500 is going to be a very, very pivotal zone. We need to get a weekly close well above 11,500. Now, some people have rightly, and just to reiterate why that is, if we look in the past here back in January of 2018, that was acting as major support. Now, again, we wicked above it here. We've wicked below it here. I'm looking at the closes, the daily, the body of these weekly candles was acting as, it was 11,500 acted as support back in January of 2018. And then, of course, support turned in, flipped into resistance in, 
in February of 2018. And then, of course, we broke down into the bear market. And it's relevant because as we come back up here, we can see that this is the area that is, again, acting as resistance. The Bitcoin has been unable to break above and close above on the weekly. Didn't do it back here in uh, July on July 1st. Didn't do it here on July or on August the 5th. Unable to decisively break above this on the weekly. Just even close above this on the weekly. We also have a very, very nice... Um, uh, um, wedge pattern here, which again, that's an equal opportunity break to the upside or to the downside. Um, so, you know, this, as we consolidate here, and as I've told you, this will get very, probability says we will get confirm or we will get resolution to this in the next two to three weeks. And again, I think that's more likely in about another week. Um, I think we'll have a resolution on this. Now, some people have rightly pointed out that, you know, we, on some charts, we have actually closed above 11,500 on others. It's a little bit below that. Um, and yes, that's absolutely true. On, on, on some charts, it's about 11,050. On some charts, even as high as almost 11,600. On others, it's a little bit lower than 11,500. Not all charts or not all spot charts are going to be the same because prices prices change over on various um, exchanges. So it's, it depends on the exchange you're looking at. But what you want, but all the charts are within this about uh, within less than a one percent difference um, in this area here. In other words, you know, it, within it's within a one percent difference of 11,500, um, and it's it's basically the zone that you're going to look whatever chart you happen to be looking at you want to look at this zone that it's topping out at and again you it, there's going to be a little bit of play here but as long as that play is within about one percent we can say that 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 area has not been decisively broken above um so i want to be i want to make sure i'm clear on that because somebody did rightfully point that out it was a very good question um but i you know i want to be clear we we really need to decisively break above this zone i don't mean by a couple dollars i don't i mean a real decisive break above eleven thousand five hundred you know eleven thousand six hundred eleven thousand seven hundred a nice close above that zone to where there's no question this zone has been penetrated that's what we're looking for um on this uh on this overall chart all right let's check some moving averages all right, starting off with the four hour, we have broken now above the 50 simple um, as well as the 200, uh, the 200 simple here. Um, so th this does look like it's wanting to avert a death cross again on the simple. And I'm, I'm, um, I'm just looking at the simple now. So we're, the 50 crossing below the 200 that was threatening to do that, that has of right now been uh, been avoided. And we are above the 50 simple and the 200 simple. That is a bullish sign. Of course, we're well above the uh, the uh, 21 exponential. And of course, that's where it found it broke above here, came back down, tested it. That acted as support, and then of course it took off again. That that's a short-term bullish sign. So on the four-hour, things are looking okay as of right now. We're we're, we're stretching out the upper Bollinger Bands here. Um, so you know things are looking okay on the four-hour. Now I don't want to read too much into it, but things are looking okay. Now let's look at the uh, let's look at the daily here. Looking at the daily. We are finding resistance right at the 21 exponential. And as you guys know, guys, I put a whole lot of weight on that 21 exponential. If we can get above that, if we can get a daily candle closing above that 21 exponential, guys, that is going to be a very, very, very bullish sign. And of course, what we would like to see is a decisive break. So even if we close above this, that's not going to be a decisive break. A decisive break is what? An open and close above any particular area that you're looking at. We're looking at a daily can the, the daily um, uh, the daily 21 exponential here. That typically is what signals a a, a trend, a, a trend shift. Uh, of course, in this case, it would be if we can close, if we can get a daily opening and closing above the 21 exponential, that would be signaling a potential uh, trend shift in favor of the bulls. So if that does happen, guys, that's going to be an extremely bullish sign. But as of right now, it's being rejected. So let's see if we can get above it. Let's see if the daily can close above that 21 exponential. If it does, I do think there's a very good chance we come back up and we test at least that $11,050 zone, 11050 that next major area of support that we are, excuse me, of resistance that we are pointing out right here. We all we have broken above the 55. The 55 exponential was acting as resistance. Daily exponential was acting as resistance. We did decisively break above it. That is a bullish sign. We did overt the uh, prevent the uh, um, eight day EMA from crossing below the 55. Again, that is a bullish sign. What I'd like to see is the eight day EMA crossing back above the uh, 200 exponential here, or excuse me, the uh, 21 exponential here. Let's wait and see if that does happen here. But as of right now, not looking too bad, but I do need to see some follow through. We're, we're finding resistance there. I need to see a break above that 21 exponential. We are starting to see the, the uh, daily Bollinger Band look like they're starting to bottleneck. We're also starting to see the 821 and the 55 day EMA all start to converge here on the daily. And again, if this does 
does continue where they converge and where the, the uh, uh, Bollinger Bands bottleneck, that would indicate a much larger move to come. Um, we'll have to wait and see how it plays out. Let's look at the weekly here. Weekly, we are back above the uh, the eight-week EMA here. That is a good, that is a bullish sign. We have been defending it here. Never did come back down and test this 21-week um, uh, uh, EMA here. So, you know, this is, again, this this is a bullish sign of strength. The bulls have not given up yet. Doesn't mean the bears um, have lost, but it just means we are seeing, a, in, again, as I like to say, an epic battle between bulls and bears, and we're going to have to wait and see how this massive consolidation pattern plays out. But in the short term, it does look like the bulls are starting to gain the advantage, and we'll have to wait and, again, wait and see how it plays out, particularly on that, uh, to see if we can get a daily candle closing above that 21, uh, 21 exponential, guys. You guys know how much emphasis I put on that 21-day exponential. Now, coming back out here to the daily, we are, as I pull, as I showed you guys before, we are seeing some structure in this market. If I go from the prior swing low to that swing high, and then I see where we bounce, we bounce right at the eight uh, at the eight eight six five, which Bitcoin is, especially on the smaller time frames, is fairly um, fairly uh, infamous for doing. Um, so we did we did get a nice structural bounce right off of that zone, and if I look at this from, if I grab my Fib extension. We can see where are we finding resistance again, right there at the 382, which coincides nicely with our uh, $10,650 zone. So we're finding some resistance right there at the 382. Where's the next major area of resistance? Right there at the 50, which coincides very, very nicely, very close to 11,050. And the next area, the 618 Fib level, level, literally overlays the $11,500 um, area of resistance that we have mapped out here, guys. And that would, of course, be your big boy. That would suggest that even if Bitcoin does come up here, it's going to have a hell of a time breaking up. Above 11,500 because that is also coinciding with the golden ratio, the golden pocket. Um, so again, that would suggest maybe a, a rejection right off that zone. However, if it can break above 11,500, guys, again, for many, many reasons, as I've talked about, 11,500 is very important. This is just one other reason. If it can break above 11,500, guys, that would be very, very significant. And again, I'd be looking for um, for, for targets to at least uh, 12,000, if not 12,400 in the very short term. All right, so to kind of wrap this thing up, guys, and again, I know it's a little bit frustrating. You want to hear this thing is going to break up, this thing is going to break down, and all I can do is kind of give you a play-by-play -play until we do break out of the massive area of consolidation. That being said, how am I playing this? As I said, I have a very small position that I did enter as soon as we had that confirmed break above uh, 10,650. Um, I, I entered it on the retest down there, guys. I think I got in somewhere around uh, 10,600 and... Uh, uh, 50 or 45 or something. It's something like that. I have to go look at it. Um, but it's a very, very small position guys. Um, because I just, even though, even though yes, technically it makes sense. Again, we've had a lot of resistance that Bitcoin may come above and it does look to me like there's a, there's a chance it may come back down and retest 10,400. Um, so we'll have to wait and see kind of how it plays out, but I'm, I'm happy to hold that. I'm happy to, if I, if I get stopped out, I get stopped out. And again, I'm looking for it to come out and I will get out at 11,050. Um, even though I think that there's, if it does end up coming up and testing this zone, I think there's a good chance it continues up to 11,500. This is not the time to get greedy, guys, especially considering that we may be painting a very bearish pattern of either a broadening rising wedge uh, or either a rising wedge or a, a, a rising broadening wedge. Either one is a bearish pattern. Either one would suggest a break back to the downside eventually, even though to the upside, uh, even though we can continue in the very short term to the upside. Both of them would, would suggest a breakdown to at least about 10,200 to if, if not even lower than that to potentially down to about 9,000. Uh, 400. Um, but again, we're nowhere near there yet, guys. So let's wait and see how it plays out. I would say that both the the rising wedge and the uh, rising broadening wedge would both be invalidated with a break above 11,500. Um, so again, they're both very valid right now. A break above 11,500 would completely invalidate I, both of those. So I just want to keep that in the back of your mind. So the short term, small scalps here and there, but do not get greedy is the name of the game in my opinion. Again, I'm not a financial advisor, not financial advice. You guys do what you want to do, just kind of giving you an idea of what I'm doing. If we do get a break down below 10,650, I will be looking for coming back down and retesting 10,400. We may get a bounce off there. In fact, I do think there's a good chance we do get a bounce off 10,400. That being said, if we do break down below decisively, below below about 10,250, I do think there's a good chance we're coming back down to 10,000 and I do maybe even 9,950 for a retest. And it's going to be very interesting to see how it tests off that zone. If we get a decisive break below 9,950, in other words, if we get a four hour this time, four hour open and close below 9,950, I do think it's a very quick drop down to about 9,400. And even though we may not break 9,400 on the first pass, I do think that we break it eventually. I do think if we come back down and retest 9,400, may get a bounce out there, but I do think 
think it eventually that breaks down. And then we're looking at that $8,500 to $8,900 area. Again, we're nowhere near there yet, guys. Just kind of want to give you the areas to look for. If this happens, you know, then look for that. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap Bitcoin there. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, please let me know in the comment section below. As always, appreciate an upload. If you have enjoyed this content, please remember to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell in the right-hand corner. Till next time, guys, please trade safe. Take care of yourselves. This is working. Signing out.